Welcome to this part of the service where we take time to read a Bible passage and to listen to what God might say to us from that passage. And we're taking a title today from Luke, uh, well, we're looking at Luke 21, 25 to 37, and we're taking a title that follows government advice, it says, stay alert. Actually, it's in Bible text as well, depending on your translation, stay alert during covid and beyond. Okay, COVID isn't there in the Bible text, but coping with different crises that can even seem like the end of the world, that is there. So how do we stay alert during COVID and beyond? Let's take a moment to pray. Father, I pray that as we spend time thinking through the themes of this passage in Luke, that you would speak to each one of us personally, and that that would break through to our hearts and give us a sense of how you want to reassure us and the actions that you might want to challenge in our lives. We ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, I, I asked you in preparation a table talk question and that question was, how do you listen to God? How do you personally listen to God? Uh, maybe we think it was a bit easy for the shepherds who were out on the hill in Luke Chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, when the, wow, the heavens suddenly shone and angels appeared to them and there were trumpet calls and different things. Uh, if God always spoke to us that way, perhaps it would be a lot easier. But that doesn't normally happen for most of us. So how do you listen to God? How do you feel God's presence, his closeness to you at different times? Uh, I found it quite helpful to realise that we are each different and the book that helped me with that uh, is this one by Gary Thomas called Sacred Pathways. I may have mentioned it to some of you uh, different times before, but it looks almost like personality types at the fact that different one of us, different ones of us experience God's presence and his closeness in different ways. And I'm not going to take time to explain it all carefully. You can go away and read the book if you like, or do a little analysis to help you understand yourself. But I will just mention uh, the different types he mentioned. So uh, naturalists, sensates, traditionalists, aesthetics, activists, caregivers, enthusiasts, contemplatives, intellectuals. Uh, those are the different ways that it highlights that different people relate to God. So for some people, it's very much the intellectual wrestling with the Bible text, whereas for others, they need a far more meditative approach. Uh, for some, it will very much be being together in community. And that's what they will be missing desperately at this time uh, when we can't all gather together in church. For some people, it's just to be able to get out and they may be reveling in this if they get to do it. Uh, to be going on walks out into nature and feeling God close to them in those situations. But we need to find ways to make sure that we are listening to God and then hearing what he wants to say to each one of us individually. And I want to look a little bit at what happens to the disciples uh, as they are trying to do that in this passage. But let's recognise that in the midst of COVID, sometimes listening to God isn't easy because we have worries that might distract us, even feel like they're paralyzing us. Um, and that stops us being able to hear God. We might especially need reassuring that God is in control and has his purposes at a time when it doesn't seem like he's in control. Uh, maybe you're one of those people who feels that you have extra time on your hands and that's a chance for us to reset our compasses, reset our directions, our priorities, our values, and to listen to God. Other people, maybe you feel like you're just being pushed along, rushed along, and you haven't got time to do that. And yet we need to find ways to take time to hear and to listen to God. There's a video to help us do that. I've just been feeling so blah lately, you know? I mean, I'm just thinking about the Bible and how it talks about how God was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if that's true, then why can't I hear him speaking? I'm sorry. I'll talk louder next time. What? 
Well, I mean, I wasn't saying anything, but I mean, I can talk louder if that'll help you. What are you talking about? Well, I wasn't talking then, but you couldn't hear me, so no, I'll, I'll no, talk louder. No, I'm talking about God. Why can't I hear God speak? Oh. Are you even listening to me? Yeah, I'm totally tracking with you. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, if that's true, then maybe you can tell me. Like, what is the problem? I mean, why can't I hear him like he was talking back in the day? Well, you can. I mean, that's what the Bible's for, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the Bible is awesome, but I just feel like I'm missing something. Like, it should be deeper or something personal, you know? I don't know. I mean, I've never heard him, but let me look it up. Look it up. Just take a second. No, you don't just look it up. I mean, it doesn't no, even make it. Any... Don't distract me, please. What? Don't distract me, please. Distract you? Yeah, I can't thumb type and you talking. Hey, pizza's on sale. That makes total sense. I know, because it's a weekend. No, no, what you said about distracting. Hmm? You did? Yes, maybe that's what the problem is. Okay. I mean, we never, ever, ever just stop and listen. Well, no, you can't just stop. I mean, you've got to keep on living, right? That's well, the whole point of life is Yeah, to I mean, live. you have to live. But I'm just saying, like, how do we expect to hear the Lord speaking unless we actually give them time to speak, right? Yeah, give him time. Yes. Well, let me think. I don't have any time. I might be able to pencil him in next week, Thursday no, no, or something. No, 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 no. Let's just try right now, okay? Huh? Let's just stop what we're doing, and let's just listen and wait for him to speak. Okay. Okay. Okay, that was great. I gotta go do laundry. No, 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 no. You can't just do it in two seconds, okay? Well, that was time, No, right? no, no. Okay, like, look, just sit down, okay? okay. And All we right. are just gonna stop and give time to God and let him speak, okay? Okay. <sighs> what are you doing? Waiting for God to speak. No, you're playing on your phone. No, I'm multitasking. It's fine. Oh, okay. Can I see that? What? Oh, that's great. Okay, so hey. what we're doing here is we're stopping what yeah. we're doing, and we're listening for the Lord. That's what okay? I've been doing. Yeah, so well, let's try again. Okay? You can do this. Okay. This is taking way too long, and it's not even working. If you're not going to take this seriously, I'm going to go do it somewhere else. Take what seriously? Me waiting for God to talk to me? Come on, I told you God doesn't speak anymore. Is it that God doesn't speak anymore? Or are there just more distractions keeping us from hearing him? Drew, I've just been feeling so... Okay, uh, so stay alert during COVID and beyond. And our reading this time is in Luke 21, uh, 25 to 37. And let me take time to read that for you. Uh, Luke 21, 25 to 37. And there will be strange signs in the sun, moon and stars. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth, for the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up, for your salvation is near. Then he gave them this illustration. Notice the fig tree or any other tree. When the leaves come out, you know what uh, without being told that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Watch out, don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware like a trap, for that day will come upon everyone living on the, on the earth. Keep alert at all times, 
and pray that you may be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Verse 37. Every day Jesus went to the temple to teach, and each evening he returned to spend the night on the Mount of Olives. The crowds, the crowds gathered at the temple each morning to hear him. Okay, uh, as we look through that passage, um, I think Jesus is telling us about things that are going to happen in the future, but I think he's doing that with a real care for the disciples, a sense of pastoral care for the disciples. Sometimes we know people aren't really hearing us. If you're a parent, you've got that experience, you warn your kids about something that's going to happen and you think they're not listening to you and then something happens and it shows that they weren't listening to you or you repeat yourself and suddenly in the midst of all that they go ah now I know what you mean I don't think that's an experience just for parents with their own kids I think probably you can think of conversations you've had with other people as well where you know they're not listening um, and they don't think it's relevant and then suddenly it catches up with them and there's an ah moment for them and I think this text is Jesus speaking to the disciples with a sense that they're not really hearing him yet, but he knows that there will be an hour moment when they discover the significance of what he was saying to us. So what happens when people aren't hearing us? Well, I think there's two tactics. Sometimes we say something to shock them, uh, to break continuity and to hope to grab their attention. So you remember in the passage last week when John was speaking to us, um, Jesus mentioned the destruction of the temple. The disciples were in the midst of admiring it and the frequency. They're going there every day. They're teaching. This seems like a settled life and this wonderful, solid stone building. And he says, it's all going to be destroyed. He's trying to get their attention, but they don't quite seem to grasp what it means there. So that's one tactic we might have to get people's attention. Um, and then uh, the other one, say the important thing anyway, and hope that if not now, at the moment of need, it will be recalled and helpful. And I think there's an aspect of that that we see in the words that Jesus is speaking now. He knows that there will be tough times coming for the disciples. He knows that there will be tough times coming for us. And we may not take notice when he says that now, but when, he, when we face them, he hopes that we will re uh, recall these words and it will encourage us and help us as we face those. We do that all the time in life, don't we? So here uh, are different road signs that are warning us that there's a danger ahead. Why is it there? It's not just there um, because it's unimportant. It's there because it wants us to be prepared for what's coming so that we can avoid the dangers of that item there. If we know about it, it shouldn't be a problem to us. If we don't realise it's coming and we come up too fast, we might be in trouble. So here, I think we are being warned about dangers uh, that are ahead or hazards that are ahead. And just to emphasise how much of a part of normal life there is, this, all of this is, here's a few more things that help us. Smoke detectors in your house or neighbourhood watch schemes or this watchtower. This is actually one on the South North Korean border. So they are watching out all the time for something that might be a threat. Because if you know about it, you're ready to respond. And here, Jesus is speaking to the disciples about the things that are ahead so that they can know and be ready to respond at that time. So, setting the scene. Uh, Jesus has travelled with the disciples to Jerusalem. All the way through the different teaching, the stories we've been hearing, They've been on this journey into Jerusalem. And remember how they were welcomed by great big crowds as they came into Jerusalem. Um, and then he's established himself as the Messiah, um, the Saviour that was prophesied in the Old Testament. But they were expecting him then to cause an immediate revolution and to uh, be able to kick out the occupying forces and to become the king. He wasn't quite the Saviour that they felt they were expecting but he nevertheless emphasises uh, that he is the promised saviour. And then we've seen him answering questions. Uh, and at each time, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the different religious leaders who were coming to him, 
he was able to rebut the questions that they gave with quite clever and wise answers that seemed to establish his authority and his popularity with the people. I think it was quite a comfortable time for the disciples at this time. He may not have been the savior that they were expecting, but they were beginning to recognize the authority he was having with other people and maybe find a place of comfort within all of that. So he had something of a routine. And we see that at the end of this passage in verse 37, uh, he's teaching, he's doing that each day in the temple and I think that all added to the comfort that the disciples felt at this time. I think where we are in the story of Jesus' life, this is actually the Passion Week. We're on the Wednesday, the night before the Last Supper, and just two days before he will die on the cross. As we've gone through Luke's Gospel bit by bit, maybe we forget where we are in that time scale, so I wanted to remind you is two days before the cross, there is danger ahead and he needs the disciples to be alert. Speaking, but not being heard. Verses 25 to 28, it's going to get dramatically tough. That will be the route taken before blessing comes. Think of the book Pilgrim's Progress and the great adventure that Pilgrim is on. And before he can get to the promised land, the blessing, uh, he has to go through or has to take the road that goes to all these different places um, that prevent, uh, that give him challenges. And I think, again, that's a similar picture to what we have here. Jesus is warning of some of the trials and the dangers that there will be ahead. Verses 29 to 33, uh, seeing the whole plan will reassure you even when you can't see fruit or signs of life are limited. We've got the parable of the fig tree in there. And when you look at the tree and there's no leaves, you can wonder what's going to be happening. But if you know, as the seasons change and the tree begins to bud, and then the leaves grow and then the fruit comes. If you have a view of the whole progression, it can reassure you. So Romans 8, 18, uh, it says, I don't consider that our present suffering is worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And that's a perspective that can easily help us when we look uh, at what we're facing now, because we know we have a hope to look forward to in the future. And then back in Luke, uh, verses 34 to 36, don't be distracted. Um, there's all kinds of statistics at the moment about the added amount of alcohol people are drinking here in the COVID lockdown. And you may remember at the beginning of the lockdown or just before it came to its heaviest, all the supermarkets were suddenly sold out of alcohol. Don't be distracted, drunk or despondent, but stay alert. It doesn't just have to be alcohol that distracts us or numbs us. We can fill our minds, fill our lives with other things that stop us from hearing God or stop us from concentrating on the priorities that we want for our life. Don't. Don't be distracted. 37 to 38, the routine uh, that we have suggests the words of Jesus were heard, but not connecting. And you can see the strength of the warning he gives. I think he intended as a disruptor to the disciples to help them think about what was coming and yet they stayed in the comfortable position of just seeing, ah, his teaching is being accepted. Uh, this seems to be going well at this time, but he's trying to warn them of what comes next. How are we coping in, with suffering in this time of COVID? Uh, some of you are living quite a normal life. Jobs have continued as normal, maybe a bit busier. Uh, some have a very personal experience of suffering. We have somebody who's a friend whose daughter at the moment is in hospital, uh, has been uh, near intensive care and then transferred to another hospital. And you've got restrictions on visiting, all kinds of different things happening. She's actually not suffering even from COVID, but that is affecting how life goes on in hospitals. And we've got members of our own congregation who are going through challenges medically, and it's harder than usual because your ability to meet with friends, your ability to see uh, even different doctors and so on, 
is more restrictive than usual. So maybe in the midst of that, you're feeling very alone. Even normal life has changed. Uh, some of us have been involved with those who have support workers, people who help them with different aspects of life. But the way that even that's been operating has all changed and it's made normal life uh, difficult for different people. I think that's one of the great things we have at SVC. We have a real diversity of people in different situations, but we've all been affected differently at this time. Some feeling alone, some feeling it's fairly normal, but we need to have an awareness of each other and to be praying for each other at this time. Some people will just be numbing themselves to what's going on around them. So uh, if the suffering isn't directly your experience, or even if it is, you're just trying to minimalize it in your mind, almost, and I'm not saying you're all getting, going out and getting drunk or something, but almost like that, we find ways to numb ourselves to what we can be feeling as pain, instead of staying alert. We hear stories of courage, of different people coping, rising to do great things at this time. Um, but actually, we can only see that courage displayed because people are facing adversity. If we don't, if people aren't facing adversity, we don't have an opportunity to see the courage that they have. Uh, different verses that talk about courage. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Psalm 27, 19. Um, and I've written it up in different ways. And then uh, also in Ezra 10, 4. Rise up, take courage and do it. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Uh, just like be alert. Actually, that's another Bible phrase that's been used in other contexts. And uh, there's been great adverts in the past that from a brewery that also says, take courage. That goes back to perhaps the mumming one. Uh, even though there was a story of an African Christian who came to Britain one time, and uh, he was asked about how he was getting on and what he thought of British culture. And he was saying how wonderful it was because he sees signs everywhere telling people to take courage. But it was that one encouraging people to have a beer. So take courage, but it's important that we find the courage in the right things, otherwise it might let us down. Uh, as happened with the beer adverts, when they tried to uh, revive that campaign in 2009, um, then uh, there was a campaign against it and the advertising authority made them withdraw the ad because they said that beer cannot give you courage to face life or to face asking a woman for a date or different things. So it's important that we find courage in the right place. Jesus is coming again. The stars speak of it, verse 25. I even wondered at one point, does that mean, oh, maybe there is something in horoscopes or different things. I don't think that's the intended meaning here. Certainly that's not the way God plans to announce it. But the whole heavens are speaking and will be involved in Jesus coming again. We won't be cooing at a baby, Jesus. People will be terrified. Think of the Christmas story, and that's a situation where we think of the baby Jesus, and we can be there in admiration and a kind of cooing sense. But here, his coming is not referred to in that way. It says people will be terrified, petrified, heart stopping some trend, uh, some commentaries even say literally uh, dying of fear by the impact of the way Jesus comes again at this time it will be a big event he isn't coming quietly it's a climax it leads to the full experience of our salvation until then he wants to speak through us this is something that I personally find uh, quite awe-inspiring because actually God has the power to speak now in the same way I think he will when Jesus comes again. Think of that coming again. It's almost like the clouds are being ripped apart with a, here I am, hello, I'm God, I'm the powerful one, I'm the creator, I can do anything. Here I am, clouds ripped apart, terrifying 
awe inspiring. He could do that any time, but he doesn't. We're in the period where he's speaking through us, where he's using us. He's speaking to us as individuals and he expects us to be able to bring his will here on earth, to be able to be involved in other people's lives and to show his love to other people, to live by his values. He's not doing the break-in yet in a big dramatic way because he's using us to speak into other people's lives. That will change. But right now we have the privilege of being his body here on earth. So in the midst of life and struggles, don't be distracted. Stay alert. Listen to God. Take courage. I think it's almost like a movie scene. Listen to God. Take courage. Action. So let's sum it up a bit. Stay alert during the COVID and beyond. Luke 21, 25 to 27, the challenges that I think that come to us with this passage. We need to grow our ability to listen to God. The words were there. Jesus was speaking to the disciples. But I think in many ways at this time, they weren't impacting. They hadn't yet seen what he was saying to them. So we need to practice our ability to listen to God and to hear what he is saying to us personally that's relevant to us at this time. What can we do to grow in this? What is God wanting to alert us about? And in what areas are we refusing to hear him? Think back to that illustration of things we want to say to our kids sometimes, and yet we know there are certain topics where they just don't want to hear us. I wonder if there aren't areas where we could think we are the same with God. He's saying something to us, but we just don't want to hear it. Are we taking time to listen to him? How can we grow in this? What is he wanting to alert us about? And in what areas are we refusing to hear him? Like the disciples, God wants to use you to change the world. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for the movie of how God wants to use you? change the world? Are you listening to the script? The return of Jesus will be earth-stopping and needs to be prepared for. What do I mean by that? Well, that's a time when whether we have faith or don't have faith will change everything. What is God to you and in your life? If you're just going on living with him as incidental, maybe there, maybe not there, maybe not important, then I think it emphasises that his return when he breaks open those clouds will be a terrifying experience for us. Or can we take courage because he's warned us what's coming and that will change the way that we live now and we can be ready and eager for that and take courage that he is in control at all times, even when we're in storms even when it's getting tough. The choice is ours, but we have to be ready for that choice. Um, might reassure you to know that the videos that I use are ones that I'm able to buy from a website, including a web license for them. And I want to use one of those to do our reflection as we close up and as we ask God to lead each one of us personally. So here's a reflection that will come through a video, and I hope God has blessed you through this passage today.